What is up everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Sherdog.com and today we are looking ahead to the first major European card of the year as uh, KSW 78 uh, goes down over in Poland on uh, on January 21st and you know what? It's a, it's a really, really good card. Uh, I suppose atop the card uh, in the main event we have uh, the rematch between uh, Michelle Matherla uh, and Kindle Grove but and you know those are supposed to be the two big names on this that a lot of people would know but watching the the tape on this and watching a, a lot of the, the previous fights and a lot of the, the fighters on uh, uh, outside of the main event I suppose here this is a banger of a card I think a really really good card KSW always put on good cards and always have good fighters and always have good matchups but looking through this and watching some of these fights just the the you know there's some fighters uh, that you look at it, you might know the name, you might not have seen them before, and they're just, especially, um, my, the names are always going to be really tough, but Radislav Bukowski in the Coleman event, he's only 5-0, and oh, but God almighty, I haven't been as excited, <laughs> I haven't, I haven't, like, text, like, three people and said, have you seen this lad in a while about a fighter, so... Uh, he's fighting Thomas uh, uh, Romanowski, who is, uh, you know, 25 fights deep. So that's uh, that'll tell you how good he is and how good some of the fights are on this. But yeah, a very interesting card and a very interesting um, time for, I suppose, KSW. You know, I, I didn't do a KSW recap uh, of the year. I did it with all the other promotions. And maybe, maybe I should have. Maybe, maybe that's my bad. But I, did, I didn't end up doing it. Um, but I was supposed to start off before we get into the fights. Like KSW... <sighs> KSW have a good year every year. Someone asked me, I was doing a QA the other day, and they asked me, is there an argument to be made that KSW are the second biggest promotion in the world? And if you look at the way they pay, if you look at the amount of fans they draw, if you look at the longevity, if you look at the quality of fighters, if you look at the quality, you'd say, of the fighters that have left the organization and went to other places. I think there's a huge, huge, huge argument you could be, could make, and uh, an argument that could be made that KSW are up there as you know the second, third, are in the running for us, biggest MMA organization in the world. You know, okay, no one's going to reach UFC levels, but it, like, you sometimes we get caught up an awful lot in the likes of Bellator or RPFL, and you know they're doing good things and they're doing doing it the way they do it. But the way KSW has done it for a lot of years the way KSW has been able to hold on to their fighters as well for a lot of years whether it's Kaladov and Pujanowski obviously the last time out or whether it's Materla or you know for a long time holding on to Saldic for a long time holding on to Gamrat it, it feels like it has the quality of say Cage Warriors with the longevity I suppose of maybe the, the Bellator and, and the UFCs which is a great thing to have if you are an MMA organisation I suppose in a locality because, you know, they, and I think they actually announced a Croatian card coming up. Obviously, they've been in Ireland, they've had a UK card. But, you know, I suppose they haven't travelled as much maybe as we had expected because they're so... Well, there's a lot of different reasons for that. But because they're so successful in Poland, they don't really need to. They can earn a lot of money. Um, the, the promotion, the fighters can earn a lot of money from the promotion. And they're, you know, they're doing great. Like, I, I heard a story about uh, a KSW fighter... So, uh, wanting to be signed by the UFC and the amount that they offered that the UFC offered him was the same as one the logos and his banner up behind him like that's the, that's the sort of stuff you get with KSW They're, these guys are very very well paid and are big massive stars uh, in Poland as well so you know I suppose if you look look at last year look at any year for KSW and they do great things they put on more huge shows again obviously with the, the as I mentioned the Khaledov and Pujanowski one but there's like this Croatia show looks like it's going to be big as well and it'll be very interesting I'm, I'm sure they would have loved to have Sal the channel unfortunately that's not going to happen now but yeah it's going to be uh, it's going to be very interesting to see uh, the next year for KSW it was very interesting to watch a lot of them last year and this card as well coming up is very interesting so let's get to it like, I suppose we'll we'll start and we'll talk about the main event uh, and it's a rematch uh, and uh, also before I start shout out to my guy Sean and he's always a great help uh, with these uh, with these KSW cards whether it's pronunciation or telling you where to go who to go and the information about them absolutely brilliant so follow him over on Twitter at Dean Rents is always great uh, to help me out uh, on them um, but yeah as I said the, the main event uh, Materla uh, against Kendall Grove you know 
we all know, I suppose, Kindle Grove at, at this stage, if you've been watching MMA for a long time, um, a lot of people probably thought we'd seen the last maybe of Kendall Grove, where he hadn't fought since 2019. So that's, you know, coming up on, on what, three and a half, four years now, obviously just into 2023 here. Um, and he was once a very fun and very useful fighter. I suppose he hasn't been uh, at his peak in a good while now. I think he's 40 years of age, lost a lot of fights, although he won his most recent one. But, you know, he's always a guy who was game, who could hit hard, who was, had the ability to finish, uh, whether it was with those big punches or whether it was on the, on the ground with his submissions and all. I know he's been fighting a, a bit of uh, BKFC. I've actually, I, I've been looking for a few of his recent BKFC fights and the most recent MMA ones as well and some of them I found one BKFC fight and I watched it and he looked good in it maybe maybe they specifically put that up because he did look and when I say look good in it he won and then he was you know going forward and landing some shots now maybe it wasn't necessarily BKFC but it was some sort of uh, bare knuckle anyway and um, you know he looked he looked fresh and he looked like uh, a guy who could strike you know so he did well on that um, but I don't think it's unfair to say that Kindle Grove is a guy who is a, a long way past his best, and especially a long way past the, the fighter he was when these guys fought, you know, years and years and years ago, all the way back in, what was it, 2000 and, 2014, was it? Let me just look at 2013, yeah. That's a long, long time ago. That is a long time ago, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of water under a lot of bridges since then. Now he hasn't actually fought that many times since then. Surprisingly, you know, he was over in Bellator for a while. He fought some very good guys there, including Shaminko uh, and, and and John Salter around the 2016 2017 mark. Last three in a row there, and obviously was uh, was away for a while before he came back and, and won his last fight before uh, not uh, not fighting again for a while in in mixed martial arts anyway in, in 2019. Um, you know, I suppose he wasn't one of these guys who was getting knocked out all over the place or anything like that. And in the in the the, the latter parts of it, I suppose he did one of the last three fights there. He did get knocked out. Now he got knocked out a good few times throughout his career. Don't get me wrong. Let me just look here on Sherdog. It's he has eight knockouts. You know, I suppose he has eight knockouts in his career. But as I said, you know, his last four fights, what he's had six fights. He's only knocked out once. You know, so I mean. It, it, and like he was fighting some good guys there, he got knocked out by Shemiko. He got submitted by Salter, but went to the decision with Matthews, went to uh, beat Joey Beltran, uh, and won the two other fights as well. So, you know, you take from that what you want. Um, from Materla's point of view, um, it's a very interesting fight for him as well. He's thirty-eight years of age, so not far off Kindle Grove. As I said, you know they both fought at the same time all those years ago. <sighs> I'm I'm very interested to see what this fight looks like, number one, but also what KSW kind of wanted to be. You would think, you know, having lost a couple of names I mentioned there earlier, especially likes of Saldage, that they would want to keep guys like Matarla around who are a name, who are able to draw, who are able to be, you know, stars for uh, KSW and even in positions like this so maybe some people might look at this as a kind of um, a warm up match to get him back you know with maybe bigger matchups ahead and uh, I would probably look at it that way as well if I'm being honest but last time out he did get knocked out by Pudzianowski now look Pudzianowski has turned into a very good fighter and he <sighs> The question I have here, right, is, and and I maybe take the positive slant on this question. Maybe some others won't, so I'll put it out there. Like, was it Pudzianowski actually turning into a very, very good MMA, or a good MMA fighter after years of saying, oh, he's just a strong man? Or was it a much smaller guy who was past his best getting knocked out by a super heavyweight, basically? Which one of them was it? No, I think it's look. I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's a little bit of both, really. But in his two fights before that, like Materla had won. I know, okay, he'd lost to to Saldic, but he'd won two before that as well. It's not, you know, the, the same as Kendall Grove. It's not as if he's getting knocked out all over the place or anything. He has a few, obviously, but I I'm very interested to see, as I said, how Materla looks, but how KSW, I suppose. Uh, and maybe we'll never know. Maybe we'll have to draw that conclusion ourselves. But how they want this fight, I suppose, to go. How do I think the fight will go? I like. I, I went back and watched the first fight there the other day, and it was, it was a very interesting. It was a bloody affair. Matarla got like there was a one stage. 
they were born on the ground and you were like who's bleeding here <laughs> I don't know but it looked like Matarla like the, the kind of the bridge of his nose uh, got caught at one stage uh, he got on top a lot and landed a, a good few shots and like you look at Matarla's record he's never been submitted and he's won by uh, submission 13 times so when you get a guy like that to the ground who has knockout power as well you know he's 11 knockouts uh, as well as the 13 submissions in 31 wins you know he's only gone to decisions 7 times so no obviously a large finishing percentage but th- the fact that he's never been submitted puts him in a place on the ground where if he does get you there and if he does get on top of you there's probably only one thing happening it's him either finishing you or beating the uh, you know the, <laughs> the fight out of you let's put it that way um, and that's the way I think it'll, it'll be again I think Kendall Rove will try to use his length try to use his size um, I think Matarla will probably come in land a big shot and Kendall Grove will feel it if you get me you know whether it when he feels it and goes backwards and ends up getting set TKO or knocked out or whether that happens he goes to the ground Matarla gets on top and ends up dominating him from there that to me would be the most likely outcome I think I think he'd probably drop Kendall Grove maybe even push him against the fence and take him down after hurting him a couple of times uh, and win the fight from there I think it'll be one of those fights but look we saw that the last time as well it was in a ring the last time as well it'll be in, obviously in the cage this time which adds a little bit uh, of something different to this one but yeah I think um, if I give my pick and I'll give him for these fights I think uh, I think Matarla will win this one uh, but uh, look for, it's good matchmaking in terms of it's a good two guys who fought before in a very even fight two guys who are around the same age two guys who aren't in the best maybe moment of their career but also to get Matarla back to where KSW would want him to get that this is probably a winnable fight for him so yeah I can't complain about that matchmaking at all and, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing that fight next fight on the card uh, is, is the one I was, I was just talking about there Tommy Romanowski um, <laughs> his fight uh, against uh, Pachuski uh, Radoslav Pachuski there we go I'm t- t- shout out to, to Sean Nini for the Pachuski there you go uh, I'm uh, I, I, I watch Pachuski I, I really really like the way he fights I uh, like my notes on him he's an outside fighter with that does a lot of circling and you watch a few of his fights first right and sometimes you watch guy and I, I love to do this right I love to watch a minute of a fight the, uh, a minute at the start maybe a minute in the middle maybe a minute in the end and you kind of by that you can kind of see the fundamentals of what a fighter does throughout a fight if you get me like people can change people can change themselves about their orthodox or you know whatever it might be and you'd notice that obviously if you did that and you'll, you have to maybe go back and watch it and sometimes it doesn't always work doing that but I like to do that because sometimes you'll see if a guy okay minute one he's wrestling minute seven he's wrestling minute 14 he's wrestling minute one he's so bad, minute 14 he's so bad, minute seven he's so bad or whatever it might be right and you get a certain idea from that but you don't get the whole idea from that and that's exactly the way with uh, Pachuski because you look at him he's circling he's circling circling he's throwing leg kicks you know um you're thinking all right what's this guy gonna do what's his, what, what is he gonna produce from this you know is he a guy that's kind of you know, um, Wonder Boy, who fights on the outside and just tries to touch you up for three or five rounds. Is he the guy, kind of a guy like Pettis, who sometimes does that, but a lot of time isn't able to achieve that, but wants to do that because he has this beautiful, slick striking and great submission game and wants to land that. Or is he the type of guy who does that for what he is, right? And what he is is an electric power striker an absolutely electric power striker this guy blue screens people like i watched one of his fights and he was circling 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 bang right hand right down through the middle blue screen the guy next fight i watched blue screen the guy this and he's only had five fights only had five fights now i'm getting excited about him um, I was talking to Deshaun about it Look, Watching these fights obviously He's never faced a great high level wrestler yet um, You know he was a champion kickboxer as well 2-0 now in KSW But you know I suppose people will, will know what he will do So 
what do you what do you do when you meet that now in these fights one guy took him down in one of the fights I watched he did get taken down got back up pretty quickly so I would say he doesn't have great takedown defense but he is able to fight out well you know he is able to, to, to get out of it he isn't a guy who's just you take him down and that's it he's in the fight now it might be but he isn't necessarily that and I enjoyed uh, watching him strike but I also enjoyed watching him get back up because Sometimes you watch guys and they're like, okay, they knock a guy out or they may, might get a lucky knockout or they might do well striking and then they get taken down. It's like, ah, oh, well, this guy's never going to be a high-level MMA fighter because of this, because of this fatal flaw that keeps happening. Um, but he seems to have a little bit more now. Let's see. Let's see if he does or not. Um, Romanowski on the other side are, is, you know, he's in one K- KSW. He's a local fighter as well, uh, with a big following. One of the most popular fighters over in KSW, as I said, 25 fights, uh, 17 and 8. Uh, one of his last four against good opponents, knocking a couple of them out. Um, you know, to me, what going back and watching him, I, I would call him a power striker as well, a Saupa, uh, tight boxing, tries to defend. But you know what I love about. Uh, about Tommy <laughs> He loves fighting too much <laughs> You know Sometimes you watch guys They're like right They're doing all the right things And then they kind of get hit once And they're just like Nah boy nah and Just <laughs> everything comes out That is To me Tommy Romanowski He absolutely loves it And he's good in them Like he loves the exchanges Absolutely brilliant in them uh, Now is that the right thing to do in this fight? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Um, he's missed weight a couple of times as well. It's definitely anything to, to watch out for. Um, but like, just like checking the records here of, of Romanowski. I, I know he has won a couple of fights. One fight only by submission and the rest are by knockout. Gone to a decision a good few times. Um, you yeah, know, the only fight he's lost in the last good while is Patrick Kalinic. Um, and, and he got knocked out in that one. I, I don't know I, I No I don't know Do you know what I, I'm gonna go for my guy I like him I think he's a very good fighter I'm gonna believe in him I'm gonna go for uh, Radoslav Pachuski To win this one I know He's only 5 fights in He's fighting a guy With 25 fights Who's a very good fighter Who never loses But that power That power Is absolutely Different, different level, different level of power. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that one, and uh, I think you should be too. That's is that my fight of the weekend? Am I, am I, I'm not. It's not my fight of the weekend. This weekend is the, the UFC, and then, so maybe, maybe not my fight of the weekend. But God Almighty, I think if I was doing my five fights for January again, haven't gone back and watched him. Obviously, seen um, uh, Pachuski for the first time, uh, or maybe the second time. Uh, I would be throwing that one in. It's a great fight. It really, is a great fight. Uh, we'll move on. Next fight in the card uh, um, is Boris Manikowski, Manikowski against uh, uh, Valery Murcia. Uh, Manikowski, just really strong. Really strong is, is what you would say about him. Loves to clinch, loves to wrestle. Uh, he's a BJJ black belt. Lost his last two, but he's won 11 fights in KSW. Um, you know, he can strike. Doesn't knock a load of people out. Um, loves to get a submission, you know. Uh, watching him, like, it's the clinch he loves to go for and he loves to wrestle. I, I wouldn't... Do you know what I would say about him? I wouldn't say he's the most amazing athlete in the world, but he does what he's good at, which is, A, tries to hit you hard. To maybe, you know, he tries to knock you out. Doesn't get many of them, like, but to try to either do that or try to get you to to knock... Uh, to, to, to get the fight to the ground. Um... And that helps him get to people, which is often a big problem for for wrestlers or guys who maybe are looking for a submission. Very good ground and pound. Um, he, do you know what? He no. I say he throws the right hand. He throws the power shot to get in and to get the fight to the ground. A lot of that. I'm just reading back over my notes here. Remember, it's like a lot of that is because I don't think he goes for enough takedowns. And sometimes people actually try to take him down, and he invariably lands on top because his wrestling is so good so watch out for that in this fight I definitely think that's uh, a thing that, that can happen here his opponent uh, Mercia he's fighting out of uh, Italy he's of uh, Moldovan descent uh, he's good, uh, good um, wrestler in judo as well uh, but he's watching his striking he's very very good 
you know what? He's he's the type of guy who stretches in with shots and goes straight down the middle of people when he probably shouldn't. But la- I'm sorry, but lands when he probably shouldn't. You know, some guys you, you see him like I remember the, the famous fight I always uh, have the example of is Eddie Alvarez versus McGregor, where Alvarez was leaning at him, stretching him with punches, and you know hitting the chest of McGregor over and over, never hitting the, the head once. And you look at that and you're thinking. God, that's that's almost the worst thing to be in a fight when you're throwing everything and everything is missing. I can, the, the amount of energy it must sap out of you. Uh, but Mercia, the, the solitary wolf is his nickname. He's able to do that. He's able to do those stretching in shots when people are backing away, and he's able to land them, which is it's very debilitating as well to a, uh, you know to an opponent because. Um, it's a very hard thing to overcome because they think they're defending by backing up and it usually doesn't work for them well. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's a very good thing to watch out with him. Great in the scrambles as well. Relentless when he does wrestle. He's a guy as well who looks like a striker and he acts like a striker and everything make you think he's a striker. Uh, but then when he wrestles, you're like, no, 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 this guy's a wrestler. Very low hands and he does get hit. He does get hit when he, he likes to do that. But uh, I think this is a, you know, a very interesting fight. He is wide open. Um, like I, I think if Boris could hit a little bit harder, I think he'd have a great chance here. The the thing though, like Mercia to win this fight, I uh, look. I think if it's a striking battle and he's able to kind of keep Mankowski on the outside of a lot, uh, I think he'll probably win it. But he does get hit so much, and also like if you think the, the battle for Mercia, the wrestling is the best part of his game. But Mankowski is really, really good at reversing people and getting on top find it very hard to call this fight honestly um i think the biggest area of superiority is probably for mercia in like the technical stripe striking aspect of this fight but he is just so bad defensively not bad defensively i I don't mean that but like because gets hit so often that it's hard to actually pick him to to win that sort of fight so um I don't know. I, I don't know. I will pick this one to. Uh, if, I think. Do you know what? I, I, here's my pick for this one. I think someone will get ground and pounded. Someone will land on top, and someone will win. And you know what? If if it's Mankowski that lands on top and is able to open up, I'll go for Mankowski, but not at all with any assurity uh, on that one. Um, next fight on the card, in the fun one again, is uh, Roman Skiminski. Uh, he's taking on Raul uh, Taturauli. Um, Tatarali, he's been around for a long time. Both of them been around for a long time. I suppose twenty-two fights versus thirty-seven fights. Tatarali, uh, a lot of wins on, on uh, fighting over the Eastern European scene, fighting on the uh, the Russian scene as well. He's a uh, Georgian, um, and he, you know, he is one of the guys I suppose has been around Georgian MMA for a long time, and he trains with some of the guys over in the UFC and, and stuff at the moment. Um, very, very strong everywhere. I would say watching him, like you can see, he's a very strong wrestler. Huge crown and pound. Likes the guard as well. Um, he he's he's like one of these guys who stands up in people's guard and is still able to keep control of them, which is something that's kind of unusual, I suppose, in MMA these days. We're used to seeing it down through the years with maybe the like the, the likes of Mark Coleman and others, but he lets fly with his hands as well. Uh, vicious knees, you know, very very good striker. So I'd be interested to see this. Obviously, gone in there against Kaminsky. I would. Um, I would class him as a speed striker. Um, now, I think maybe I watched this after watching some of the heavyweight lads, <laughs> or the heavier lads on the card, so maybe maybe he's a bit speedier than, than, than uh, uh, I'm making him out to be a speedier than he is, but um, he loves to, uh, if you watch him striking, he loves to lift his feet. When he's striking, he like lifts his feet up like to, to warm up his calves or something. It's really weird. He's a real rhythm guy. Loves rhythm and he's striking. He's like a seesaw. He comes in and out and in and out. But like not in and out like a wonder boy or whatever. Literally like seesaw. Like literally like seesaw in and out. It's mad. Loves the body lock takedown. Varies it up. The one thing I would say about him, I think he varies it up uh, too much. Who was it he was fighting? It was uh, Paran Nass, wasn't he? he? Was fighting? Let me uh, let me just pull that up here now. While uh, while I'm on it, I don't want to get it. Uh, I don't want to get it wrong. But um, yeah, it was Paran Nass, the fight I was watching. Because he varies it up so much, you're almost kind of thinking, right, he's not sticking to any one game plan. This is not like a cohesive game plan here to win a fight. But he is very good and does everything very well every time he tries to do it. I am picking him to win this fight. 
You know, I, I think he does need to throw more, but I think I think he's a bit of a better striker, to be honest, and I think that's where he'll win it here. I think he'll be able to control this fight uh, easier, especially that Paranas fight, but I, I do think he will be able to control this one here, and I, I do think uh, he will win it. Um, there's a fight here. Uh, Lucas uh, Soldowski is fighting, uh, I think... Actually, is it Kleber Silva? I think that was just put up here, so I haven't had a chance to go back and watch him yet. That fight, uh, it was an unknown fighter when I was, <laughs> I was doing my research here on this, but uh, Solovsky 10-1 and Kleber Silva 20-11. 20, 20 um... I was talking to Sean about Soldowski. Actually, he was telling me he's one of uh, the best light heavyweights making his KSW um, uh, debut. He, he actually fought in the Contender Series and lost over there. He was a champion over in uh, Babylon MMA. Um, Silver in BJJ player as well. Brazilian coming in uh, to uh, to take on the European fighter. He uh, he fought Philip Lins, I think, over in Bellator as well. Uh, so, interesting fight uh, there in, in that one. Um... One interesting fight as well, and I enjoyed watching the, the tape on this one. Um, uh, Rafael Kianchuk um, is taking on uh, Mark Dudis, is how I'm going to pronounce it. And it, Mark is one of the most insane fighters I have ever watched in my whole entire life. My first two words on my notes here, pure chaos. This guy is chaos. Just simple as that just goes at you he just goes at you uh, it's funny my, my brother loves fighters like he's always like ah if i was a fighter i just go straight out there leave it all out there this is what mark is just goes absolutely he's insane he catches lads as well sometimes but he's very very good wrestling very good ground and pound extremely muscular and uh like there's no way that you can keep that going so if he doesn't get you out of there in the first or second round i i think you you probably have uh, you probably have to win it there Whereas uh, Rafael, 10 KOs and 11. Lovely jab, lovely outside strike and hard leg kicks. Uh, he can offensively wrestle too, but he does get taken down. So that'd be the danger for him there. But if this, day, like, I think Rafael is going to catch him, blue screen him. I've said the word blue screen now a few times, but that's what I think is going to happen there. But if he doesn't, and Mark gets him to the ground, this is going to be heavy ground upon him, probably a finish. The first eight minutes of this fight are going to be... Oh, they're going to be fun. They're going to be real, real, real fun. So I'm interested to see uh, how that goes. Um, there, the last couple of fights then uh, on on the card. Uh, Oscar uh, Sipachanchik, who's a three and one, whose name I absolutely got perfectly correct there. Uh, he's taking on Ramdamanas uh, Kilavicious, uh, who's seven two and one. Not much tape on Oscar. Um, I, think I got one fight of his only, I think. Good take down the fence and reverses it looked like. Looked like he's a good striker. He was actually an amateur fight, I'm pretty sure, of his. I watched. Uh, but he's a young guy. Uh, local guy, I believe. Uh, a lot of uh, amateur uh, experience. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, how he fares. Um, uh, Ramon Nodos is a... Uh, I would describe him as a flowy outside fighter. Loves strong leg kicks. He's a southpaw. Throws very well in combinations, lovely uppercut, um, and looks good on the ground as well. It's very look, it's very hard to call who will win this one. Obviously, haven't seen, not seen much of Oscar. Um, I, I'd have to I, look. I'll go with uh, with, with, with uh, Ramdanas here, but with no great assurity as well. Please don't bet him ranting uh, if you're um, if you're uh, you know relying on me for it. But there was another fight added as well. Uh, Boris uh, Dzowski taking on Damien uh, uh, Mizukowski Damien 1-0 oh, Boris 2-0 uh, oh. um, apparently he's a very good power kickboxer is Boris he got a lovely head kick in his KSW debut uh, and Damien uh, is new as well debuting here as well uh, or sorry his debut was a, a second round KO as well so that should be a fun one and should be a, a few knockouts there in that one or one knockout even, but there will be a few knockouts throughout the card here. I would uh, I would be very assured of that. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this card, as you can probably tell. Uh, I think it's going to be very, very good, and it's always fun to watch um, to watch KSW do their thing. So, I will leave it at that. Uh, let me know in the comment section below uh, your picks for the card and who you're most looking forward to, uh, to seeing uh, on this one. And uh, I will leave it at that. My name is Sean Sheehan for SureDog.com, and I'll see you all next time.